Hello everyone, welcome back to the Echelon Sport YouTube channel. Today is another analysis day and Israel and Lotto Sudal are on the table. This is going to be a little bit shorter. I'm going to be solo once again and I'm going to be making it much more efficient than I've been trying to. Another step in uh, trying to do this a little better. Anyways, let's get on to what matters here. Israel Startup Nation is the first team that we're going to talk about. A team that has had a lot of chatter, uh, chatter, a lot of interest in this transfer season. One of the teams that has made some of the biggest moves. Now, let's take a look at their moves. They're very um, pronounced. There are lots of big riders, but there is one specific detail that is very important. You've got Patrick Bevan, Alessandro Demarchi, Chris Froome, Daryl Impey, Carl Frederick Hagen, Seppa Mark, Michael Woods and Sebastian Berwick coming in. Sebastian Berwick is the team's youngest rider at 22, 21 if I'm not mistaken. Here it is. The rest of the team is, um, yeah, Carl Frederick Hagen is 29 and all of the other riders are above 30. These are pretty much the riders that are going to be the big hitters of the team this season, adding to Dan Martin as well. Dan Martin did really, really good at the Vuelta. I think that he's still at the, the, the best shape that he's got. I thought that he wasn't going to get there anymore, but this Vuelta proved me otherwise. And I was really quite surprised on the positive for the performance that he's had. And uh, joining him will essentially be a team of riders that are... You know, still some aren't in the decline, some are close, some are already declining. You know, you've already got Andre Greipel in the team as one of the stars, so to say, and Ben Ehrmans, some of the biggest performers, uh, performers already with some very high age. And you got now the same type of rider coming in. Riders that I imagine that don't have such a high salary, except for Froome, of course. Uh, some that can really bring in results. I'm not going to say they can't, but long-term, you know, risky, risky moves. Uh, this, Yeah, looking at the squad, you know, the first thing that pops to mind really is this is a team that if they don't win Flash Valon, then they don't make their season. Because having Dan Martin and Michael Woods, Flash Valon is their race. It's the perfect race for both of them. <laughs> and... If they don't take this classic home, then they're not going to have a successful season. Uh, in a light mood, of course. The main topic really is about Chris Froome. What he can do. Can he win the Tour de France? I'm going to go very short on my opinion. That answer is no. And I don't think that he's even going to be near it. Chris Froome is a tremendous rider. One of the best in this decade, of course. But... Uh, after his crash, he just hasn't been the same. Uh, in the Tour de Line, he, he actually showed solid legs, you know, legs of someone who could actually go to a Grand Tour. Um, he did in the Vuelta some solid riding, but nothing compared to what he used to be able to do, nothing compared to what the Grand Tour contenders were doing in there. You know, of course that I think that he can still recover a little bit more, get some more power back into the legs, but at the same time he's already 35 and it's really, really hard to imagine him coming back to a level where he can fight for a Grand Tour. I think the debate is, I think this is an opinion that is shared by most people. It's going to take a very, very big surprise to see him even fighting for the GC at the Tour. But he's a rider that I do like. I do like Froome. So I do hope that he is able to recover and be at his absolute best at the Tour. It would only be even better for the show. Uh, but let's see. I think it's a very, very hard call. Uh, you have some more riders that are going to be there to support him. But uh, this is a team, I would say, that is built around stage hunters. Because uh, there's no way in hell that Dan Martin is going to go to the Tour to fight for the GC with all those time trialing kilometers. Froome should be the only option because Woods is more of the same. Woods also can't time trial. Uh, they should, in my honest opinion, target the Vuelta again, the Ardennes and some stage races throughout the season. I think that's what they would do best at the Tour Hunt stages because, um, yes, I was getting to the point where even most of the riders that came in, despite being quality riders, they're stage hunters. Demarki is a pure stage hunter. Bevan is a pure stage hunter slash time trialist. 
Darren Olympi, you know, if he, there's no tour down under. Th that is where most of his results came from. It's really hard to see him perform in other races. He can get some good results, but it uh, won't be easy to get any wins. Michael Woods is a stage hunter, a classics man they are on, uh, of the Ardennes, not Amstel. Do not consider him a favorite for Amstel, but for the other two, yes. He's, he's good for steep finishes, races in Spain especially, so he can do well in some stage races, but they, uh, they can't have many time trialing kilometers, otherwise it's going to be really, really hard for him to perform. And you've got Sepp Van Mark, who's going to lead the classics team. You know, uh, considering that Niels Pollitt was their former leader, this is definitely a step down. The team has some solid riders for the Cobalt Classics, I won't lie. I really like the likes of Mads Wurtz. Um, there's Hugo Ofstetter as well, but I mean, this isn't really... Uh, this isn't really a trio that can thrive in the middle of the World Tour teams. They can target some smaller classics. Uh, off that there is, of course, the Le Saman defending champion. Uh, they can get some results, wins. It will be very, very hard unless if Sep focuses on some smaller classics, like exactly like Saman and, um, for example, Duarte Zorat at Aglan at Aglan. Chucked a little bit in there. Uh, but Van Mark is another one of those riders who seems past his peak. The year he helped Betty all win the Tour de Flanders, it was a massive performance by the both of them, but I really don't see that happening again, and I really don't see Van Mark performing now outside of EF. He won't have a team as strong as there, not even close, even though he wasn't the leader in these last few years there in the squad. Uh, yeah, you have those riders that, you know, you've got Fre Carl Frederick Hagen as well, he did an amazing Vuelta two years ago, if I'm not mistaken, two, three years ago. Um, he hasn't performed ever since, I was expecting something from him this season, and although he's one of those riders who you think he came from out of nowhere pretty much, he is fir he's 29, he's 29 actually, I thought he was 30, but he's 29, he's not getting any younger, he's not a young rider. Can he still get some results? Sure, he can get a stage win or two during the season, I wouldn't be surprised, he is a quality climber, but mm, I wouldn't expect him to see, uh, I wouldn't expect to see him ride as strong as he did in that Vuelta, where he finished in the top 10. Uh, you've got Sebastian Beric as well, a uh, quality climber, if I'm not mistaken, he did very well in the Herald Sun Tour, exactly second in the GC behind Jay Hindley. Uh, he's a quality rider, he's the only rider who came into the team, and pretty much one of the only young prospects that we can consider out of this team. There's a lot of experience, but um, most of the team leaders are riders that want to race separately, that they won't really be racing in block. You saw in the Vuelta, Martin had no support whatsoever. Uh, even though now we probably will have a bit more, the riders that are coming in, and even Martin himself, you know, they're stage hunters. They're not very good GC riders. They 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 need specific routes to succeed, routes with very few time trialing kilometers preferentially. This is a team like UAE two years ago, something like that, where there just isn't any sort of organization for the climbing squad, which is the main part of the team. Uh, in UAE, it wasn't the main part of the team at the time. And even this year, if you didn't have Jan Polank with Tadej Pogacar, it, just w it would be Pogacar alone. Uh, you had Dalla Cruz there in the final days of the tour, riding really well, but throughout the, the rest of the tour, you know, you had riders like Aru who couldn't really help and now, who isn't a domestique? Formolo, who is a stage hunter. Puncher, Ricosta, the same. You have tons of riders like that who are just stage hunters. They're riders that like to be in the breakaways. And they were never really much of a help for the GC riders. Pogacar especially, Dela Cruz as well, when the time came. And I think that here in Israel, you, you find just a whole lot of the same. You find a lot of stage hunters. I don't think it will be very organized, but uh, you know, if they get the results, then so be it. I'm ready to swallow my words. 
Then you have also the sprinters, of course. Grapple, as I've mentioned, I don't expect much from him, but I know that he's still got the power and he's a rider that I will be cheering throughout the whole season. I will, yeah, I hope to still see him net a win. You have uh, David Shimolai and you have Rudy Barbier, two quality sprinters capable of getting some good results. Now, if they will take wins, I think so, but in smaller races, I think there are no comparison yet for the big sprinters. And uh, yeah, I mean, they won't be, but that's not a problem with them. They are very, very good riders. Um, the team does have strong lead out. It has good riders for it, as you saw in the Giro, for example. Dowsett, Brandel, now with Bevan, and a lot of experienced riders, to be honest. For example, with Rick Zabo as well. Uh, so I think that they can definitely get some minor results. And uh, if I am to consider a surprise and a disappointment for this season the surprise would probably be it's hard to be honest to name a surprise because there really aren't a lot of young riders in the team that you can really think of it like that I think it's much easier to name someone who isn't going to perform at the expectations that are given to him Obviously, I can name Froome because, I mean, that is just an easy target. It depends on what people think. If some people think that he's still capable of coming back, fighting for the, the GC at the Tour, then definitely I would name Froome. But I'm aware that most people don't consider him like that. They're not expecting him. So, um, I'll go perhaps with Seth Van Mark. Because I'm really not expect he's a quality rider, but I'm really not expecting to see him doing much at the classics. First of all, because team and equipment just going to be completely different, completely different flock, and he he's not as strong of a rider as he was some years ago. I think he's past his peak. He's 32 already, and um, I think the team is going to be completely deprived of results in the classics, in the big ones at least. With Niels Pollitt, it didn't go well this year, but he was a very, very strong rider. It's a shame that they lost him, so I don't expect much from the team this season. And if I'm really uh, to name a rider that I expect to perform better, then maybe Mads Wurtz. I think he's someone with a lot of potential. He doesn't have uh, a speciality, so to say. He's a ruler. They don't get many opportunities, but he's got some solid results. He's got a lot of wins in his resume as well. I think that the lack of a speciality kind of doesn't allow him to have many wins. But maybe, you know, maybe he can even be the leader of the team in the classics. To be honest, I wouldn't be surprised of that, taking over Van Mark. Quality rider, very, very powerful. Very underrated still, I would say, and uh, I hope that he's able to perform this season. Now, the second team for today is, of course, Lotto Sudal. And Lotto Sudal isn't very different from Israel, to be 